but yeah, I think so. We'll start off with a karakia just because it's a good way to start and finish. Um, so if you want to, I guess, repeat along with me um, or maybe after me. So, uh, fiti ora, kite fai ao, kite ao marama, fiti ki runga, fiti ki raro, e ngungu, kite pohatu. E ngu, e ki te rākau. Ti taha, ki te nei taha. Ti taha, ki te rā taha. Ti hei, mau reora. Cool, so that's always a good way to start and finish if you're doing something within Te Ao Māori. Start with a karakia, finish with one. So the first thing we're going to look at is the manawa line, which makes up like the basis or the backbone of any core fi fi design. There could be more than one manawa line, um, but we'll start off with, well, I guess one manawa line. So if you want to draw, draw along with me. So start off, draw like a straight line, a squiggly line, just some sort of like line on your piece of paper and write down manawa line. So I'm just going to do a straight line just for simplicity's sake. I guess the most basic of all of the core fi fi, like, what makes up a core fi fi is the koru that's probably seen in like most, if not all, um, core fi fi patterns. So, I'll, how I like to start is with the outside line. So, you go drawing from the outside down to your line that you've made. And then, you, when you're drawing koru or anything in terms of core fi fi, you want to try to keep the lines, unless you're doing something like more abstract, try to keep the lines a similar width. So, I'm going to try to keep this line the same as the line that I'm going to draw underneath this one. Keep that kind of the same. I'm just going to... Alright, and then this is when we draw the ends of the kuru on the side here. So you start off, we'll do one more. You do your outside line down to your manawa line, inside line, and then the outside. The little, like, curve there. And often where um, the koru is touching your manawa line, you'll erase like these parts. Cool, and I'm just going to draw one more. So again, outside line. Inside line. And the little end of the koru. Um, and so the koru can mean a lot of different things in a core fi fi. Like this, if it's just by itself, it can oft often mean regrowth, rebirth, because um, it is representing that like unfurling of the fern. Um, so yeah, often about growth, it could be represent like a newborn baby, like that kind of thing. But when you have koru in like moko design, or when it's added into other things, it could represent like a person. It could represent an idea. It could really kind of represent anything in terms of the context that you put it in, in with other designs. Now that we have, Wait, yeah. It has a different meaning on its own than when it's combined. Yes, yeah. So it, um, the koru you can kind of attach a lot of different meanings to, but by itself, if you're looking at like the really generic meaning for it, mm -hmm. it is growth, rebirth, like a new beginning. All right, now, second most simple design. It's basically just two korus. So we're going to again practice our koru drawing. This is the mango pare. It represents the hammerhead shark, so it's about tenacity, um, strength, just kind of like having, I guess, a fight in you or having some sort of, yeah, strength. So if you've done it, if you've done your koru on one side, you could try to go to the other side. It's good to practice doing your koru in lots of different ways. Um, but yeah, I always start with my outside line, then your inside line. Not super even, but get the gist. You would be a little bit more tidy. Again, outside line, inside line. Same thing, outside line, inside line. And cool. So this. So this whole design is the mango pare. And this often doesn't change the meaning in terms of the context you put it in. It's generally always going to be a mango pare. It's always going to mean like strength, tenacity, hammerhead shark. 
Um, but in some instances, the way that you um, like position the mango pare will mean certain things. So if it's going downwards, if it's facing down, it can sometimes mean the death of someone. Um, if it's facing upwards, generally normal mango pare, strength, tenacity, that kind of thing. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is representing someone's death if it is facing downwards. That is just one context. I know on a moko koiwai, which is like the chin tattoo, if it's facing upwards, it means you're the eldest sibling. And if it's facing downwards, it means you're the younger sibling. So like, depending on the context, these meanings can mean a lot of different things. But I'm kind of giving you the general basis, and then it can mean lots of other things. Yeah, outside of that. The next one is the koiri. So, um, Sometimes referred to as a mother-daughter design. Um, it represents like nurturing. So if you've got the big koru is the mother, the little koru is the daughter. So it's um, yeah, basically about compassion, love, like whatever you associate with your mum is what you'd associate this design with. So if you're gonna if you're gonna go inside, if you've left, left enough space, hopefully, um, inside of your koru. We are going to draw oh, another koru on the inside going out. So not on this side, but the side. We so coming in towards your manawa line. Oh, I'll do what we did before. So line one, line two. And again, you'd like to raise these little bits. Cool. And we'll practice on the other side. And then one. Line two. Cool. And again, often, you don't have to erase the lines, but um, often in core five five, whatever is like overlapping or touching is erased. Like it's, yeah. Um, and also another meaning, so when you have a mangopare and you have the koiri, so the koiri is just this part here, but when you have them both together, becomes a mangopare koiri, so it's about being strong in your compassion, having strength in the love that you have for someone. So it's like an ultimate strength of compassion, I guess, yeah. So you can see how when you design, well, when you merge multiple designs, it adds another layer of meaning, another depth to the meaning of it. Yeah, so that would be, I'll do one more on this side. Yeah, and so with this one, the koru is always coming out. Now, the next design is the nutukura. So it looks very similar to the koiri, except we've got this little like curve in the design. Cool. So this um, design here is representative of the um, harakeke flowers. So ngutu um, means lips and kura means school. So it's a school of lips. So um, when you have like your harakeke flowers, it's a bunch of them, so it's like, and they look, I guess it was like the red lips is why they've kind of named it that, I guess. Um, yeah, so it is, it can be about education, it can be about a collective group of people, um, whatever you would associate with lips as well, like lips, it could be someone's an orator, um, it could be just about beauty. Um, yeah, so that one can have a lot of, few different meanings, again, depending on the context or what you're trying to say. Basically, you kind of decide the context. Like a, a, um, a moko artist or a ko fai fai artist will know the basic meaning of the des these designs and then be able to extrapolate what they want to say. Yeah, so often I look at a ko fai fai and I won't know exactly what it means because it could mean a lot of different things. So you'll need to ask the artist often. Cool, so this one here, you were going to like a little swoop in and out. So instead of your straight line, you're doing it in and out line. Same thing here, in and out. Practice on the other side, in and out. Curve, in and out. Cool, and we'll do that one more time. So in and out, in, out, curve. Sweet, and then raising those lines again. And again, because it's in the context of the mangopare, it'll have that 
attached meaning of strength and tenacity and that kind of thing. So moving on to the next design, we have the Pūhoro. Um, so this one is often seen on the thighs of men, sometimes women as well, um, but it's one of the more traditional moko tattoos and it's also seen in ko fai fai as well. But it represents strength, agility, basically whatever you'd like, what you'd want your thighs to be is what it represents. <laughs> 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 so you'd chuck a uh, like, yeah, puhuro on your thighs to make them a bit stronger, I guess. So this one here is, uh, can be a little bit harder to like draw, get your head around because it's a, like a lot longer strokes. But basically you're, kind, you're trying to do, so if we go like a, if you try to do like a really long koru, so you've got your really, a really long line and then another really long line underneath it. And normally if you're doing just normal koru, you'd curve it around like that. But with, um, a puhuro, you curve it slightly, but you don't finish the curve. So curve it slightly, and the same with this one here, you'll curve this bit a bit slightly as well. And then you're almost acting as, as if you're going to add another koru um, on the other side. So you're adding long line here, and then a long line here. And you can keep extending that design like infinitely. So if I didn't want to finish it there, I could just curve it, then add another line coming around that way, another line coming around that way. It's like you're adding lots of koru onto each other. So it's a koru here, a koru here, a koru here. So it's almost like a stacking of, of koru, but you don't quite finish it. So if we're looking at like a tamoko, um, like each of these lines would represent maybe a different person as well, um, a different event in their life. Yeah, but they're, I guess, separate parts of the same design. Yeah, so that is the puhuru. So I'm kind of giving a rundown of all the different designs that make up other designs which have different meanings, but these are like the core um, I guess symbols, and then it's broken down. Yeah, that it's, everything can kind of be broken down into. And there's lots of different ways that these can look, but it's fundamentally sort of the same shape. Okay, the next one is the Ngutsu Kaka. So this is one which doesn't actually have, I guess, a traditional koru shape. Um, so again, Ngutsu, lips, Kaka, like the Kaka bird. So it's like the beak of the Kaka bird. So this one is, generally used like for that oratory, like if you've got a bit of a loud mouth, that's the design that you'd kind of get um, attached to it. Yeah, so it is being able to speak for yourself, being able to speak well, that kind of thing. And again, there's lots of different ways that this can look. Um, but ultimately it is, it is made up of a curve. So if you want to do like, okay, basically like a half most a semicircle, but not quite a semicircle. Just again, a big curve. Does this one and the one before the puhuro, mm -hmm. do they sit on the manawa lines as well? Um, this one can be off the manawa line. This one's often not attached to the manawa line. And the puhuro? Um, puhuro would be attached, or it would almost be its own manawa line. Um, yeah. yeah, so that would, wouldn't be attached to the man manawa line that you were doing. So with the puhuro, um, each of the little kuru would be a manawa line in itself. Yeah. So again, with this one, we're doing half a circle and then, yeah, I don't know how to describe that. Like tapering the ends of your, instead of going your normal, <coughs> keeping it the same width, you are tapering the ends. And with this one, you, can, you have little notches. Um, on the ends, and these can go on the top, they can go on, or, or on the bottom, it's the same design. So you do like a half, sort of like semicircle. Um, generally they're in like groups of like three to five, that's often odd numbers. Um, so you'll have like three, I will bring them back. 
and again erasing those parts at the top. And also depending on context, it can mean different things. So you'll have, often have moko with notches in them, which might represent like a different mountain or it might represent three different events in their life or something, like a number might be really specific. So those notches are specific to the number of something. Yeah. Um, we'll do the bottom one here. Add these to the bottom. And these are often not attached to the manawa line. Um, they're often like free floating. Or you'll have this one and then you'll, um, you'll have it like this and then it might be repeated. So you'll repeat. Does it matter if the notches are in the top or the bottom of it? Um, no, it doesn't. Um, there might be a specific reason why. No, it doesn't change the meaning. It's still the same design. Um, but it, it could potentially change the meaning. Again, it's like it really depending on context and the artist. Um, but for the basic, like, foundationally, it means the same thing. But there could be a specific reason why they had it at the bottom. But often, no. Yeah. Could you have notches on the top? No, you know, it's usually one side. one side. Yeah. Okay, the next one we have is oh, Maui. So this represents the, it's often like two koru kind of like interlacing with each other, but it represents the, the fish hook of Maui. So anything that's associated with the ocean, associated with Maui and his fish hook, that's the meaning behind this design. Um, so it could also represent. Um, like safety, prosperity, like um, going fishing and being able to provide for your family. So those are big, yeah, I guess drivers behind this design. And again, these are tape, we're tapering the ends on this. So, um, and this would, again wouldn't be ta attached to a manual line. This design itself is a manual line, yeah. So we're gonna have Almost like we're doing a kuru, but like a little bit more curved. Coming from the outside and in. We're tapering the end off. Same thing on the other side. Coming in. Same thing, other side. Coming in and tapering the ends. You might curve this around a little bit more than I did. Okay, so the next one is a very common design. Um, also found in Taniko. Um, oh, sorry. not oh, Also Taniko. Um, but this one is tukutuku tuku patterns. And you can see how like this one has two manawa lines um, and it's just made up of koru. And this actually has to do with, um, there's a whakatoki, which is like the flounder doesn't return to its dust. So it speaks to the flounder and moving forward and learning from your past mistakes and not going back to those mistakes, not going backwards, always moving forward and always progressing. That's kind of the meaning behind this design. Um, and I think it's really cool meaning, so I quite like this one. Okay, yeah. so with this one, um, it has two manawa lines, which we're gonna start with, two curvy ones, and you go just down and up. Like that. Bit, bit crooked, but you get the idea. Again, trying to keep the width a bit even. And then you'll do the same thing on the bottom, so curving in, out, down. Cool. And this one has the koru coming into the centre. So you'll start on the outside. Oh, it's a bit big. Outside, going in, like how you would draw your normal koru. Same thing on the other side. I'm not kind of cut them off here, but there would also be ones coming from the side. Switch. Same thing. So this is always going into the center of your kind of diamondy curve shape. Yeah, and often, unless it's like weaving, um, although it's changed a little bit more now. Māori like curves in their core fi fi. Like it's most of the designs are curved designs. 
but that's changed a little bit now because we're kind of merging um, like designs you'd seen weaving patterns traditionally into our core Fi Fi. Cool. All right. Get the gist. And if that was continued on the top, you'd have again your kōru coming in. Cool, get the gist of that design. Sweet. Okay, and this is what I mean by some of the weaving designs have kind of merged into core fi fi designs now. This is the Niho Tanifa, which is traditionally seen in Tukutuku um, panels. Also on Taniko, which is like the like bands and weaving, where you can only really work in like geometric straight straight lines. Um, yeah, and so this one is a representation of the teeth of the tanifa. So it can often be representative of, well, obviously, whatever a tanifa represents. So it could be protection, it could be things to do with bodies of water um, and protecting those bodies of water, as well as, um, like, could it also represent, like, it's like mythology and that um, idea of the supernatural. Um, I don't know if I need to give a tutorial on how to draw a triangle, but they're triangles. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so we're going to start off with, with our big our big triangle, and it's spitting it. Uh, big triangle. So I often start with like a big triangle, and then I split up my big triangle into smaller triangles. Um, I Māori like to work in threes often, <laughs> um, so we're going to split it into thirds. I'll try to find the thirds here, roughly. Let's see the line centre right at the bottom. And you'll, you'll try to keep your triangles all the same size. Um, generally, I'd use a ruler and measure a little bit better if I was trying to be super precise, or I'd use the tools on my iPad that let me do that. But. <laughs> Um, which is why iPad is very good for Māori design. Um, yeah, so I start off with a big triangle, split it into those two lines with three, and then I extend the kind of diagonal lines down, trying to keep the um, triangles all even. Yeah, but an iho tanifa, so that's if I was doing um, lots of triangles within one triangle. But you can also have like kind of floating triangles and like miss out larger bits. Yeah. Okay, the next design, yeah is the potama. So this is a very common design um, seen so normally within Taniko or Tukutuku panels, which is those panels over there. Um, and it's basically, sometimes it's referred to as like the steps towards heaven, um, but often there's been like kind of debate around whether that is actually the meaning or if that's kind of what colonisation sort of brought in. Um, but generally it is like a higher ascension to knowledge um, a higher ascension towards yeah academia generally. Okay, so the Potama also um, speaks to the narrative of Tane, um, who is god of the forest. He did a lot of things. He split up um, the earth and the earth mother and the sky father, Papa Tuanuku, and uh, Ranginui. Like he did a lot of things, and one of his feats was to go, I guess. Up, up to the heavens and gain three baskets of knowledge and then come down. So it often refers to, um, the Potama refers to, to that sometimes, occasionally, yeah. <laughs> but, um, Tane, so Tane Mahuta, or, he's got a lot of different names as well. That's one of his, his names. Um, so these are just steps. Yeah, basically means knowledge. Or yeah, learning, academia. We'll do a tutorial on how to draw some steps, but um, so straight line. Gen uh, they can kind of be the lengths can can change. So this bit could be longer than this bit, or shorter. It depends on the look you're going for, I guess. Um, but yeah, vertical line, horizontal line, and these can change in widths as well, as long as it's like basically looks like steps, often double laid. Um, then it is a potama. Cool. And that's that design. Is that more of a tukutuku thing as well? Yeah, it's more of a tukutuku, but it's seen a lot more in Core Fi Fi now. 
and contemporary core Fi Fi. Cool. Now we're going to go into to contemporary core Fi Fi. Um, so all those designs basically make up all core Fi Fi, but they'll just be arranged in different ways. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I've got a, got a few artist models for you guys. Um, so you can see his use of the Kuri, um of the koru, like over, can you see my mouse? Yeah, um, I can't zoom in, but you can see how he's used the koru and the koiri design. Yeah, um, and like again, playing with going outside the frame um, as well as symmetry um, and that kind of thing. Um, um, also overlaying different designs, like playing with colour, that kind of thing. But again, we can see the sort of same designs that we learnt. So there's the ngotukura merged in with the koru. And the same the thing here, this is the puharo that we looked at. And the centre has got those... Um, the notches, yeah. So you can see how everything kind of breaks down into those designs that we looked at, but just arranged differently. And the same we have Koji here again. And you can see the more sort of contemporary style, where you've got the straighter lines and then you've got the Niho Far. Um, yeah. Cute. So you can see how it's not just symmetry and also um, a lot more contemporary murai. Um, are seeing like having figures or having animals or yeah um, birds and things inside of their core fi fi so not just um, the figurative sort of koru and things but also the representational images as well yeah all right so now we're going to go into creating our own core fi fi based on all the drawings that we've just done mm. Okay, so I know when I am doing a core Fi Fi pattern, I like to split up my um, like grid, so I'm having things that repeat on multiple sides, so I might actually split it up into four. I generally probably do a skinnier, skinnier row, but if you want to split up your page or some, do a block and split it into four, and we'll just do one side and I can show you how it like tessellates and that kind of thing. Cool. Um, so I might start with that's my line down the bottom because I know that's going to connect and be my Manawa line. So I'm just going to add, I might do a curve line. So I'll do a curve going like that. And bringing... Just working one of the boxes? Just one of the boxes. Yeah. So curve line. I'll add another line there. So you can follow along if you want to do this line this with me. Well, um, and then I decide I want to do a kuru over here. But instead of going minimal land there, I'm going to make it a little bit fatter. And then add some notches as well. Did you decide just to fill that space? Yeah, or? just to fill the space. Um, so the output notches mean something different to the input notches? It can. Um, but it depends on the context. So, if you would, it can and it cannot. So it can also mean it can mean the same thing or it can mean something different. It just depends on what you're trying to say and the artist. But for this for this instance, no, it means the same thing. Um, now I'm going to add. Okay, I'll keep it the same so you can kind of get a gear, a big koru coming down through there. Cool. Um, I'm going to turn it into a kuri, so add another kuri in here. And then I decide I wanted to add another one as well. Um, and you could add, it doesn't actually change the meaning, you could add as many Kuru inside another kuru, and it's still a kuri, a kuri, yeah. <laughs> so it still has that same meaning of nurturing, but you could be nurturing multiple people, um, yeah. Cool. 
And again, I'm going to raise these lines where it touches. OK, and now I've decided that I want to put one more kōru just here. And I don't want to, and I want to have it a little bit fatter as well. Cool. Oh. And then I would literally just tessellate this design. So obviously, if you're working on paper, you can't do what I can and just duplicate it and then rotate it, <laughs> which is very really useful. You could do a stamp from this, could you? Yeah, you could, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So again, oh, I probably should have done the lines on a different file, but you can see um, how it then becomes like a full design. Yeah. Yeah. From that, and it's easier to do it like that, especially for students, is to break it up. Like, just do like a couple of kōru here, and then we repeat those. Yeah. Yeah. Just because like, if you look at this straight away, it becomes like, oh my goodness, I can't do that. That's so confusing. But whereas when you've done like one thing and then you repeat it and it's like, oh, it's quite cool. Yeah. So wait. And that was all I had for today. <laughs> oh, no worries. Cool. Wait, we'll just do Wakaraki to end and then that's us. Okay. Okay, cool. So again, repeat after me the Karakia Fakimutanga. So, um, Unu here, Unu here. Unu here, Kite Uru. Tapu nui. Kia fatia. Kia mama. Te ngako. Te tinana. Te wairua. Ite ara. Tangata. Kuia. Ra. Irungu. Fakairia. Ake kirunga. Kia tina. Okay, tina. And then you go, so when I say kia tina, you'd normally say tina. Mm -hmm. And I'd say huie, and you say takie. So I so, say kia tina. tina. Huie. Ta. Cool.